Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pierre Andrani from Autodesk. Today we're going to do another deep dive, this time using the reform tool introduced in Alias 2023. So it allows you to create a subdivision model really quickly. It's not perfect, it is for quick models. Then you can iterate the design or retopo, and you can make variations and a better resolved design. So here I open this file right there and I have a mesh and I'm gonna open the tool subdivision reform. And as you can see, there are only four sliders. So the, and it's math intensive top to bottom. So if you slide the bottom sliders, it won't have as much wait time as if you slide the top. So here it says, do you reduce the mesh by 50%? And honestly, I never really touched this. I just keep it as is. And then there's the target face number. So if I go in this view and I say, okay, let's reform this mesh. And it, it calculates pretty quickly. So if I move that to the side. So as you can see, it actually did try to re-topologize this entire mesh in subdies. And it did it in, let's count how many faces. So 56 faces. So the count number in here is about 50, let's say plus or minus 10%. So 56 faces, that's pretty good. So if I go ahead and retopologize again, and I say 50, so it's gonna be about 50-ish, right? And then you can see here that it could probably use more faces because it's not quite there on the mesh itself. So I could either augment the face numbers, I can do that. And let's have a look at how close it gets over here. See, it's not getting too close. So we'll try to fix that at a later date. So let's say go back to 50. And here, let's do a subdivision. What the, that does, hit two. And right here, it actually did it pretty well. If you look at this uh, corner area, if I move that, if I move the uh, subdiv body to the side, and you'll see here, it's a pretty well uh, retopologized mesh. It's actually pretty identical. And I have to get rid of this uh, you know, orange peel effect that meshes sometimes have. So if I had to throw this into a V-Red, I want to have this sheen on, but a nice and smooth surface. So here, I just subdivided by two, and let's count how many surfaces we have. So we have 224. So what happened was it took one patch and divided by one and by two. So it's a factor of four. So here, just by subdivided by two, I have a four more surfaces than I did before. So that's what the number of subdivision does. As, and as you saw, it's really quick because it's on the lower end of things. So now let's go back to reset, reform. And now let's see. You can see how the structure of the mesh is very nice and even. So what we're gonna do is try to do is actually increase the curvature bias. So now you'll see it's trying to get more math in the corner area. So I can obviously crank that all the way up. In this particular case, you probably wanna add more math because it's hard to get in those areas. So here, something we can also do, we can say edit and retopo. And now the retopologizing tool is clicked on and I can, you know, add math or relax or do whatever operation I need to do. So I'm going to try to relax with the right mouse button. So here it's relaxing the holes as it goes, which is kind of handy. Try to strain up the math a little bit. But obviously the, the key element is actually here. I need to add more math. So if I do, let's say a middle mouse and shift middle mouse, and then it adds more math and relax this area as well. And maybe add another and another maybe, oops, add another here. So you can see just by adding a few clicks and adding a retopologizing tool now from reform, I can go into retopo and really get into those areas that were giving me issues before. So it's a one, two punch. Obviously, you can get this to look as close as possible in a few clicks, or if you want to be more precise, you can use the retopologizing tool and get closer to the end result. So that's subdiv and um, the retopologizing tool. Let me delete that. Let me switch examples. If we go to 
this scene here and do a reform and just decrease my curvature bias. And again, this is a more complex geometry, right? So in this instance, you probably would want to add uh, a lot of curvature bias because it's there's a lot of shape in those areas. So if you increase the curvature bias, if you look at the way it's going to redistribute the hulls right there. And you can you can go two ways. You can either add math in uh, sections that you would need, like in those areas, maybe, for example. Here I'm getting closer. Here I'm getting a lot closer to the mesh, maybe uh, in those areas as well. And then I can I can actually literally physically move the CVs on the mesh because it recognizes the mesh underneath. Or if we say, you know, I just want a something that's representative, I can say reform again, hit this. And I'm just la letting it compute in real time. And then face number, just increase my face number as necessary. And again, I'm not accelerating the video. This is done in real time. Or I could probably use more subdivisions. So let's go with two. Okay, so now if I just uh, move them to the side and do a comparison. So in just a few clicks, I was able to retopologize this very complex area. And again, if I were to throw it out into VRED, get rid of this peeling effect. If I needed more math in those areas, now I can either go back and retopologize and maybe focus on those areas. But in just a few clicks, I think it's uh, pretty good. Again, this is really for really quick surfacing, not for precise models. So if I go ahead and delete that and go to my next example. And here we just have a mirror. So again, let's uh, go back to the reform and keep everything reset to the base values and say go. And here you can really see the curvature bias. I will go the extra length to get the extra surfaces. And again, increase the numbers or if I need to subdivide again, let's uh, subdivide again to and then yeah, move that up this time. So we can see from top to bottom Again, in a very few clicks, how I'm able to get a nice model in just a few clicks. That's something I can either leave as is, or if I want to have maybe a lower number of faces, and I can replay and remodel the mirror by itself. So now if I go back and try another example, like this one, I'm going to ask to reform. And here it's actually not building. So if I go to the prompt line and it says, fail to build uh, the mesh has more topology issues. So now we need to inspect the mesh and see what happens. So here I'm gonna reset my tool and close it for now. So if I go under mesh and I'm gonna say uh, repair, actually repair, let's look at the mesh. So you want to check self-intersecting self triangles and folded edges. And here, as you can see, it says no folded edges, but we have a fail on the intersecting triangles. If you want to show the boundary of the arrows, you can see here we have some issues in that area. We have a hole right here and some folded edges in this area. And we also have a little hole right there. This is the edge of the part, so for this hole here, I'm not worried about it too much. So, to repair the holes, what you can do is do a mesh and find a repair hole function. There you go. And now I'm just going to close this hole here. I'm going to leave this and I'll show you why. And now let's get into this view here. And I'm going to actually go ahead and, because those edges are pretty nasty. I'm going to go ahead and delete those edges and then fix it again. So if I say subset, I'm going to say uh, brush. So I'm going to select the mesh. And make it nice and maybe I'll mm, do some more. Uh, also double check on the other side. Sometimes it punches to the other side. 
take that out. Okay, so now I'm gonna say, let's delete this. Go back to my whole function and say, hello? Ah, uh, I think I need to delete this one as well. So, subset again. Select that and uh, yeah, select, unselect the back and now say delete. Okay, now I have a hole here, patch this hole right there. So here, as I said, I'm going to leave this because this is the edge of the part, but I'm going to leave this little bit and I'm going to show you what happens. So if I go and say subdivision reform, and I'm going to, and then you'll see the curvature bias at work. Now, do you see right there what's going on? If I were to increase, even if I increase with the numbers, let's try 80. It still reads this as a whole. And by reading this as a whole, it thinks it's a feature. So what it's trying to do is trying to bunch up the math. So it actually reads this as a whole. So this is why it's important to patch all the holes in your surface. Otherwise you might get a bunching up of CVs because it thinks it's a surface. You also want to be careful if when you also have a mesh with uh, edges and that goes back to the uh, best practices. So you want to make sure that you have no holes and you want to make sure that you try to clean those edges as, as much as possible because if it reads it as a jagged edge, it thinks that you will, that you want the jagged edge as a feature line. So the best practice is the, the things you need to know about for this tool. If I, uh, I will leave that as is and go 80. Again, no uh, acceleration of time. This is done in real time. And then uh, maybe I'll go, uh, let's go with two on this end. I could probably add a few more, even 120. Why not? Oh, I didn't fix this hole, did I? You can see, you can actually really see how it did not I was still trying to get this. Okay, well, that's good to know. So I forgot to patch the hole, which is here. So I'm just gonna go to mesh, fill the hole. There we go. So now if I do the subdivision, I should do it uh, without too many issues. Let's have a go. Okay, so now if I move that to the top and do a comparison, so again, you can see how it retopologized the mirror uh, really well and a very complex shape and in just a few clicks. So this is the subdivision reform tool. Thank you all for watching and for listening and we'll catch you next time.